Hi, welcome to the first steps walkthrough video. This will be majorly covering how to install the plugin into your local project and getting things set up. So to begin, we're going to go to the documentation and we're going to go to uh, the introduction and we can see first steps here, which is what we're going to be covering. Uh, you can read this if you're new to the plugin, uh, but for now we are going to be installing the plugin. So if you have bought the plugin, you can go down here, you can search for it and then install it that way and it will get installed into uh, the engine itself. For now, we are going to create a brand new project and we are going to install it locally as it is recommended. If you are not installing it locally, the only difference will be that the content folder will be located in a different location. So it is possible for you to skip this section if you do not wish to install it locally. So to begin, we're going to just make a uh, just first steps inventory framework plugin. And we are going to make a blueprint project. You can press C++ and that will get things going. But many people uh, already have a blueprint project that they're trying to install into. And we, I am going to assume that for most people, and I'm going to show you how to get the um, SLN file, which you will need to build the project once you have installed it locally. Forgot to press third person just to make this a little bit more simple. And let's remake the project. Right now you can see this is just the default uh, third person example project. And we are now going to be installing uh, the plugin into the engine. Right now you can see that in the installed, you will probably find the inventory framework plugin here. We are not going to enable it here. We are going to uh, first go here into tools at the top. You're going to press new C++ class. It does not matter what you uh, create. This is also only important if you do not have any C++ code. Basically, we are just trying to get the .sln file to appear here. If you already have that, then that's great. But for now, we are just going to make a completely empty object and just make it public. doesn't really matter. We are going to press create class. It's going to give you a warning to close down the editor. And it's also going to ask you if you want to recompile now. We're just going to say no, and we are just going to straight up close the editor. Now you can see we have our SLN file. Next up, we're going to want to go into our Unreal Engine installation. I have it set up on a different drive. I'm going to go into this folder, then engine, then plugins. Then I'm going to scroll down into marketplace and we can find the plugin here. We're going to copy. We are going to create a new folder here called plugins. We are going to paste the plugin in there. Then we're going to go back here. We're going to right click this. Generate Visual Studio project files. For now, I'm just going to open it with Visual Studio as that's what most people are going to be using. Though I do personally recommend Writer just because it has better Unreal Engine uh, integrations. But for now, we're just going to use Un uh, Visual Studio to build. Going to right click the project name. You're going to see both Unreal Engine 5 and then your project. Uh, your project should be in bold letters. You want to right click that and press build. It's now built and it is optional. You can uninstall the plugin from the engine now. I heard in the past that you had to uninstall it from the engine as it was causing issues. 
but now uh, I've tried it many times and there are no problems once it is installed locally. So this step is completely optional. But if you are seeing some odd behavior, try uninstalling it from the engine. Now we are going to see if we were successful. So we're gonna open up the project. We're gonna go into our content drawer. We are going to go here to the top where it says content and we're gonna press all. We can see here content engine plugins. And then here we can see our content folder. So it has been installed successfully. If you did not install it locally, you will want to go into engine, then plugins, and then down here you will find uh, the inventory framework plugin folder. But now we're going to go here, and now it is time to set up the asset manager. So right now I'm just going to, we are going to go into the project settings. We are gonna go into asset manager, and then we are going to add a new index over here. We're going to call this items and set it to DA underscore core item. And for simplicity, I'm just going to say, search the entire content, uh, search the entire game. But at some point you will want to go and set up like a folder here called, called items or something like that and then specify because that greatly uh, speeds up how fast the engine can load your items. And this will also search subfolders. So if you set it to content, it will go into characters, mannequin, and it will search all these folders and so forth and so forth. That's why you kind of want to specify where all of your items are. But just for simplicity, I'm just going to put it into content. In a moment, we will be validating with the inventory helper uh, if this is working. But um, for now, we are going to move on to the next point. We are going to go into third person blueprints and get the player character. I do recommend that you get the example project as there is some code that we are going to be copying from the example project. But for now, we can search for blueprint actor component inventory, where you can just search for inventory. You will see two components. One is the C++ version and the other one is blueprints. I do recommend that you go with the blueprint version for all your needs. We are just going to rename this to inventory. For now, we are only going to be covering the player character blueprint. If you want to see how I implement it, uh, if you are interested in seeing how I set up uh, physical items, then I, ex uh, then I recommend you check out the example project. On the right, we are going to see uh, settings. We can see inventory type. This is a player. We're going to leave that to default. Then container settings. We're just going to say uh, my container. Leave it to inventory. Uh, style, just leave that to grid. And infinity direction, neither. We're just going to make it five by five. We are going to need a widget to act as our inventory screen. We, I'm just going to go here and just create a widget and just call it inventory. I'm just going to make it into a canvas. And then we are going to get a uh, one of the containers that come with the demo. So. The parent container widget, if we go into this widget, the parent component doesn't actually have any visuals set up. This is so you can design as many styles of containers that you want, but all of the stylings that you get will have the same logic and always be consistent in how they behave. We are going to set size to content to true. I'm just going to center this in the middle 
and just move this over here. There are container settings for each widget. This is not where you dictate how the container behaves. That is dictated inside of your class. But this does give you a way to preview how the widget would look. So for example, we made a 5 by 5 We can set in the settings here, 5 by 5 to see how it would look. But we do have to give the container a name. So it has to match the one that you gave in the container settings. So here, my container. Now that we have the inventory widget, we are going to go back here and set the, oops. You're going to set the widget that we just made into the widget class. Now we're gonna go back here. Since we want this widget to, uh, since we want this container to have a widget representation, we need to bind this widget that we just created to this specific container. To start, we're going to have to give, we're going to have to go into class settings and go here into and add a inventory interface called uh, inven uh, interface underscore inventory widgets. And there's going to be two functions added, get containers. We are just going to make an array and we're going to pass in the widget that we made. We're going to compile that. Now to do step four, we are going to go back to the player character, go into its class settings and implement a, another interface called just inventory. We're going to go into the interfaces. We're going to overwrite get inventory component, and we are going to pass in the inventory component. But now we need to set up the blueprint, uh, the the widget, so we can open it. At some point, you're going to want to call bind container with widget, and this is where I recommend you open up the example project and go into bp underscore player character and you take a look at how i call the start component and go into inputs and over here we can see toggle inventory and we can see here how i call the bind container with widgets for now we are just going to be copying this basically one by one copy that over and paste it here. Now you may have noticed that we also need to call start components. I recommend that you just call it on begin play. There's a few things that we're gonna have to do. We are going to have to refresh some of these variables. I'm just gonna move this over here. So if we take a look, we are seeing here that uh, the escape screen is not necessary. Uh, this was not copied over. It is now just seeing if the widget is valid. So you will see that there are two, there's widget class, and then there's widget ref, which is the instanced creation of the widget. Starting the component does not create any widgets or anything similar to that. It only initializes the data that is necessary for making the component function. So it is recommended to just call it on begin play. If we take a look in game, we can see we can open our inventory and we can see the container that we made. And we can also see if we change any of its settings here, if we change it to three by five, you can see that is also reflected here. You might want to read over this just to understand what is the best time to activate the component and also understand the possible problems that you may face if you try to stop the component. 
though most of the time I recommend that you just leave the components active until you start seeing any kind of performance problems, and then maybe consider uh, stopping the components. Next, we're gonna go into down here, into working in the system, and we are going to look here at creating new items. I already did a video on how to create new items. For now, we are just going to validate that the asset manager is working and that our implementation here is working. So we're gonna go back to items. I'm going to create a, I'm gonna go down to miscellaneous. I'm gonna create a new data asset. And we are just going to make a core item and just call this my item. We're going to have to give it a name, my item. Let's give it a image. And to validate that it is working, we're gonna go into our content drawer, into our plugins. We're gonna go into core, widgets, editor utility widgets, and then tools. I actually recommend while you're here to add to favorites. So now it's over here and you can always access uh, the inventory helper and all the future tools that will be implemented. We are going to right click, press run, and it will open up like this. And I'm going to press refresh and we can see our item is here. That means we have set up the asset manager correctly. And that should also mean that we can go here, go into our items and we can select my item. And there it is. We can also validate that the item is functioning like perfectly. It can be rotated and it can have different dimensions and everything. There are more things to go over, for example, equipping and unequipping items and setting up vendors. That is a little bit more uh, in depth. And that is something that I recommend that you take a look at through the example project. But just to give you a bit of a heads up, the equipment system is primarily handled through item equipped and item unequipped. And the vendor, the vendors are handled, it is handled in the demo showcase and it is handled in interactables and vendor example. And we can see uh, four examples that come with the plugin and you can also find them here. There are some plugins that I recommend getting alongside this project. You might be in need of a attribute system, for example, stamina or strength and so forth. I recommend using the gameplay ability system. And there is a plugin called Gas Companion that simplifies and makes gameplay ability system a lot more workable and a lot easier to use. For saving and loading, I do recommend Savior as it just vastly improves the saving system in the in the engine and custom thumbnails if you are going to be using the content browser quite a lot as it will allow you to have a custom icon here instead of the usual item data asset icon so you can have for example the inventory image be this icon here there are also other plugins, for example, the I use Blueprint Assist, Electronic Notes, and uh, Node Graph Assistant, and SendDev. Th these are my usual uh, plugins that I use in every single project, and it is how I format most of my codes. So if you want your code to look uh, similar to mine, uh, I use Blueprint Assist. So for example, if my code is a mess, I can just select this, press F, and it will uh, handle all of the arrangement for me. Once you have set things up, I recommend that you keep reading throughout the introduction, for example, how the networking works. Uh, if you are doing a single player game, then I would say you can just skip this. I would also suggest you look in here just to get an idea of how things work. I also recommend you check out the 
classes and settings section. Once you start working on, for example, the container widget, I recommend that you go into here to check this out. There is also the YouTube channel. The technical deep dive, uh, deep dive is uh, a bit long, but it goes over very thoroughly of how the system works. It is currently unlisted, but it will get listed for the uh, the release of the plugin, just like this video. And you can see it covers multiple topics. Uh, for example, unique ID, item collision, networking, infinite containers, the objects and drivers preview system, and how to create more in-editor tools, and the saving system. If you have any other questions, you can always contact me on the Discord, which you can find here at the top of the documentation website. And I wish you all a great day.